Welcome to The Method, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of executive leadership. Tune in as we unlock the secrets to success, one coaching session at a time. Would you take 90 seconds to tell me about yourself? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so I always wanted to do something entrepreneurial uh, career-wise and uh, moved out to Silicon Valley in the year 2000 when the first dot-com bubble had actually yet to burst. Wait, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I always do to founders, entrepreneurs. They always start when they got to Silicon Valley. Yeah. I want to take it back. You were born, and then the next day, what happened? So take well, me through a little bit of you. To even the you. childhood. You want to go childhood. I want to go childhood. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, into a family business. Uh, I had a great-grandmother who started a candy shop. And uh, in 1939, which eventually turned into grocery stores uh, in, in the Midwest. So I grew up in this family business uh, that sold groceries in the Midwest. Uh, and the great advantage there was I, I heard, you know, business discussed at the dinner table kind of every night. And business and family was a huge uh, just part of the fabric growing up. Um, yeah. It was also um, literally the business was named my last name, uh, Schnooks. And, uh, <clears throat> my reaction to that, I have I'm one of like 30 cousins, my reaction to that, uh, uh, and I've seen many reactions to that in my family was I wanted to get away from it and I wanted to do my own thing. It, it kind of gave a, generated a chip on my shoulder and, uh, led me to immediately after college, move to Silicon Valley. Cause I wanted to do something entrepreneurial. This is where the acting was, was happening. Wait, did and, you work at the stores? Growing up, yeah, every summer. Uh, so you were like a stock boy, like I, I, I'm did, sure I was started. doing stock. Yeah, stock boy. I did uh, warehouse stuff. I did early uh, uh, before Instacart. We were doing some grocery delivery stuff. I was shopping and delivering groceries. Uh, uh, a huge number of odd jobs uh, that are inside the grocery op operation. Yes. So because most people grow up and they go, yeah, my parents work for the state HR department, or uh, uh, you know. My, my mom was, you know, worked for the school board, a kind of a job that's you know, open a paper and you go, I'll go do that. But yeah. you grew up in this kind of like, Hey, we're going to start something. And I love it that it was your grandmother who said, yeah, grocery store. Yeah. It actually my great grandma was in 1939. And then the, the, and then my grandfather and his brother who, you know, the, the older brother, dropped out of high school at 16 to, to kind of, you know, work, work in the court. It was basically, a, you know, a couple of bodegas. Uh, and those were the heroes in my family, the, the entrepreneurial risk takers, uh, the guys who took, you know, sort of continued to uh, make big bets to keep the, the business alive. And ultimately it was actually a bootstrapped operation uh, as a lot of retail businesses can, can tend to be. And, uh, so that, that also that bootstrapping mentality, uh, is in my blood. So when I became an entrepreneur, the first business I started, I did end up, uh, bootstrapping it, uh, yeah. when I was 25 and, and, uh, going from there. You go from St. Louis, Stockport, yes. college. Now you're going to Silicon Valley. It's 2000. Yes. And then it's today. How did you get to today? Went to work. It was much easier to get a job in 2000 than an apartment in San Francisco. Uh, I Has it changed had no, yeah, no, uh, the, the deciding factor was, can I work for people who I really think I can learn from? And I, uh, found a company called Quinn street, which was at the time unique because it was being managed by, um, people in their forties with career experience, as opposed to like 23, uh, three, three year olds. And, uh, that company actually survived. Uh, I worked for them for three years and then saw the early goings of how uh, performance marketing worked. Google was working and search, search and optimization was working. And I, I ended up starting at 25, my first business in partnership with Quinn Street and uh, bootstrapped that for eight years. It became a technology enabled kind of comparison shopping software business uh, that focused for, uh, primarily on financial services. Um, but I didn't know what I was doing. I, I first found coaching along the way being, you know, uh, 26 or 27 years old, having 30 people working for me and being totally overwhelmed and not knowing what I was doing. That coaching had a big impact on my life, but I was exhausted. Uh, I was before Alexis, I knew things about zone of genius or, or other things like that. 
And when I had a chance to sell the business in my early 30s, I was like, yes, please. Uh, so <laughs> Get it off my plate. Yeah. I, I sold I sold the business, had kind of a life changing outcome in my in my early 30s. And then uh, I've always had a passion for coaching, personal development, professional development. And I did a series of uh, coaching training programs or personal and professional development programs since that sale in between startup journeys. So I, I to recharge, I found them very rejuvenating. So uh, I became trained as a meditation and emotional intelligence and leadership teacher with Google Search Inside Yourself program. I became one of the first certified teachers to do that. Not necessarily to teach it as a profession, but because, wow, the learning really rejuvenated me. To absorb. Then I would launch, exactly. Then I would launch a company and be the founding CEO for a couple of years, and then I would bring in a team and hand it off. And sort of since then, have basically been building kind of a personal holding company off of my balance sheet, starting companies, acquiring companies. Uh, and now the majority of my day job is coaching the CEOs of my portfolio companies. Uh, By the way, but, I, I saw that tweet that I loved, which was, hey, uh, with all of our, I think it was LPs or, you know, in Miami, 19 of us. But the first line got me, two guys in a hot tub, 19 companies yeah. later. I love it. It just goes to kind of that, hey, we have an idea and now I can execute on it. I'm Absolutely. fascinated by this thought of, hey, I'm 26. I'm starting this company. 30 people report to me. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah. Um, and who do I go to? Because a common refrain I see again and again or hear from CEOs is, um, I'm so lonely, which yeah. is my exec team. They're, all, they're really good, but they're a bunch of jackals. Um, my investors, yeah, that they're always offering to help, but I feel like they're judging me the whole time. My board, they take up a lot of time. And then if I go to my spouse or my partner, they immediately go, oh, do we have to go live with my mother? Which happened to me. So I find yeah. that they are often going, where can I have this emotional release? Yeah. At what stage did you find that? Yeah, 30 employees, overwhelmed, feeling like an imposter, but not self-aware, comfortable enough to admit that, uh, right. went to the coach. We had a series of meetings and, uh, what, what hooked me was, you know, him giving me much needed tough love early on. Um, I, I, I still remember one of the most impactful things he said to me a few meetings in was Matt, we need to work on our decision-making. And I was like, Oh, interesting. I, was like, I knew I had lots of problems, but I was like, I did well in school. I like, like decision making, interestingly. Uh, and he, you know, it, it was just an early, like basic lesson, but uh, helping me see, like, I, you know, good problem solving and spending at least 50% of the time on actually framing the problem you need to solve. I, I was seeing solutions and, and getting excited about them and, and, and sort of pursuing them and it's not, not slowing down enough. Uh, I think our educational system often gives you the problem to go solve. But in entrepreneurship, you've got to figure out the most critical problem. You've got to frame it properly and solve it. And that was a whole new skill I needed to learn. Right, and so that was, that sounds early in your journey. Yes. And later in your journey, you sound early 30s, you almost sound like you were, you were, you were getting a bit burnt out. And you yes, were like, completely. Because the coaching, the coaching did not, and again, uh, uh, I think I also want to share and acknowledge and maybe we'll get to it. But um, as my career went on as a, as a preview, I really came across Matt and Moshari method concepts. And those have made a huge impact on uh, my life and my career development in the recent years. So by the way, thank you for the work you and your organization are, are, are doing. But, made a but difference for me too. <laughs> that's great. Uh, but for me, I, at that time, didn't have, let's say, the concept of – being able to do an energy audit, being able to, to understand my zone of genius. So, so while the coaching was impactful for me in my, in my 20s and my first business, I was still, frankly, in the root of this were a lot of, I think, uh, self-worth issues. I felt like I should be doing all this stuff. There's that word, CEO. should. Exactly. It's an amazing word, right? It, right. All, all this stuff that I wasn't really that good at, both, you know, in my case, uh, on like detailed operations, just, just all all this stuff that would just like totally drain my energy led me to a point of burnout. And it was with, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of 
uh, you know, caffeine and, and late <laughs> nights. It's gotten to the point where like, let me get, let me get to sell this thing because I wasn't, uh, doing it in a way that was, uh, sustainable. And frankly, as many of my team like to point out, while it was a great financial outcome, um, that burnout where I was, I able to hold on for another year or two, uh, probably would have meant 20, 30, $40 million of additional, uh, uh, outcome, uh, to me, but that burnout, uh, I didn't have another year. In it. So I think you touched on something really important there with the Mashari method. So what Matt is, I think one of the, one of the outcomes of this is he has found a way to communicate how to give CEOs permission to yeah. be vulnerable, yes. how to ask questions. You know, it's almost like I, I describe to the CEOs I coach, here's a common language and yeah. it simplifies things. And what it does is it says, Hey, we're all coming from different backgrounds. And so when yeah. we get feedback, um, I might give feedback like my uncle who worked at the Ford plant, who said, you know, you knuckleheads, get it together. Yeah. Or, you know, I might give feedback like my aunt, who's a professor who takes 30 minutes. And at the end of it also gives me a macrame pot holder. And you're like, wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. This gives you feedback on the same level and everyone knows the same rules and they can speak yeah. to each other. And I think that is, you know, when you're 27 or 37, 47, you're starting your first yeah. company. Yeah. Everything's coming at you. Absolutely. And what Matt does, and I think we do at Mashari really well, is go, hey, we're gonna slow down, but we're also gonna point out, hey, when you're in fear, when you're in anger, yeah. or just what is it telling you? And I got a lot of CEOs who just stop and go, I can breathe. I can breathe yeah. for a second. And I yeah. love the journey that you go from uh, first time CEO. And yeah. by the way, congratulations to you for selling. I mean, Thank first you. time CEO, that's big. And then you go and you do training. And so tell me, how have you used that in the companies you've started and yep. the CEOs you coach now? What I love is each training program I did, I mean, I followed my curiosity uh, to select it. But what I realized is the training programs have almost been like mini sabbaticals for me in between uh, founding companies and doing, you know, almost another, you know, startup tour. And, but in each case, what I've realized is the skills that I would learn in these various, you know, training programs, even though they did not seem that they were completely business oriented necessarily, yeah. were like totally new tools. There's almost like a video game concept, you know, and like my kids play video games and they're like, pick up a new weapon or whatever, you know, and now they can use that on the journey. Oh, you're like, um, you're empowering up. You're like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So like, for example, back to my childhood, my family system, German, Catholic, conflict, uh, very conflict averse. It does not happen. You do not talk back. They were, I, I did not witness conflict. Conflict was to be avoided almost at all costs. This is not, uh, obviously, of course, you carry that over into the company you create as a CEO. Uh, so that was, that was a huge challenge and weakness of the culture I created in my first company, which then led me to uh, initially this search inside yourself program where, where there's a whole, I, I became trained and certified to, to teach uh, in a difficult conversation uh, uh, methodology. And then I went to go study with John Gottman, the, the, the researcher who can predict divorce with 91% accuracy, because right. it's really around unhealthy conflict that leads, uh, leads to those patterns. So though I be, I, and I became very emboldened knowing, oh, being able to masterfully handle conflict is actually a skill you can learn. There are principles that can be applied. That was super empowering. So now I can lean into conflict within yeah. the companies I create and the teams I manage and build. Oh, thanks for sharing that. And I also share a Austrian grandmother who raised me. So yep. um, great. It wasn't, it wasn't that it was conflict adverse. It was um, your, my point of view adverse. It was amazing. Ah, yes, exactly. We grew up. And so I, I actually, I see it. I relate to that. Yeah. We, it was, I see CEOs do that now, which, and when I was my first time as a CEO, it was about command and control. Absolutely. Can you do that. I've said it, just do it. What do you, I've said to do yep. it, but it's yep. wrong. Well, let's go over the cliff together. My grandmother had a, a philosophy and she's actually in a grandmother book, which is like, one sweet grandmother after another. And then yeah. you get the stern Austrian grandmother who says you must break the will of the child. 
during childhood. Yeah. I think that's why you and I are in like such a quest to learn. Um, and I also want to point out another thing that Please. you said, which is, uh, you said, um, you know, in between my tours as an entrepreneur, almost like tours of going off to battle. Yes. And it's like you come back from some R and R recharge your batteries, get some of those energy yes. out and you go back to the tour. Yes. It's interesting how we frame it. Um, so I want to shift a little bit to what is the thing right now that keeps you up at night? It, I know you have kids who play video games, so not that. Yes. Yeah. But CEOs who I feel like I serve, who are working, you know, with me and for, and for me, like, like a, a huge part of what I'm trying to do. My job is about coaching them in a lot of ways. Right. Absolutely. And uh, so I feel incredibly fortunate that I've been able to have a lot of different training and learning from various di different disciplines. But what's also extremely exciting to me about having an opportunity to chat, chat with you is I, I wonder about and want to be the best that I can be with regard to being a, a coach, a, a CEO coach, even though I'm not a coach that, you know, I don't charge for my time to, to, to do that, but, but it's, it's still the same fundamental craft. And I am, but you're still investing. That's right. Yeah. And I'd, lo I'd like to get to, to get better at that. I'd like to understand how um, people such as yourselves and others, what do they, how do they train? Like what, what are the things that they, they do to sharpen their craft? What, what do they do to, you know, go from somebody with a lot of maybe natural uh, ability to actually move up the, the, the scale of excellence? So, the first thing I want to learn, and I, and I think this is part of coaching, is asking a lot of questions. You know, it's innate curiosity, which is, it sounds like, from what you were saying, I'm going to repeat it back. Okay, so I, I have this enviable position. I am now, I, I have these companies, but I don't see myself as some stern, found, uh, you know, investor who, you know, Carl Icahn, I'm calling yep. you up and saying, what is this profit market? No, I'm a coach. I'm a new kind of investor, I'm going to help you. And while I don't charge for any of this, I definitely invest my time and I want to get better. Um, and so as I heard that, do I have that about right? Yes. And, and the other thing I'd add is like, uh, I have also tremendous alignment and financial incentive in them winning because, you know, I, I own the majority of the businesses that uh, uh, I, I typically own a majority share of the, of, the, of the businesses for the CEOs I'm coaching. So it's sort of coaching with, with equity upside. Right. Um, it, do you re-up with any of these companies? Most of our companies are in one, in one company we have raised uh, outside funding. In the other case, um, I've been the sole uh, investor and we've typically bootstrapped. And in some cases I'll, I'll re-up and, uh, uh, you know, myself put in more money where it's needed. So there, there, yes. there are a couple of things. So again, it sounds like, hey, look, um, you know, I am investing. There is an upside to this. Yep. There's an outlier that someone else has come in, but most of these, I'm, I'm bootstrapping, and yes. I'm sitting there with, the, uh, with the, the founder, and I'm coaching them. And what I'm trying to find out, you're saying this to good old Alexis here, is, hey, how can I scale up? What can yeah. I do? Um, and I got to ask you, what kind of relationship do you have with your with your, with these founders? It's pretty close. I mean, in most case, you know, in, in, in one case, um, I've worked with, with a guy we, we, we met actually back at my first, uh, that first company I worked at in my, awesome. in my early twenties. Yeah. Uh, and he was, uh, the CMO of uh, the first company that you know I, we we bootstrapped and sold, and then he started this company. I was an early advisor in it. Uh, I invested. I came on for a couple of years as the operational CEO, and then he's now the the CEO. So we have a very close, very long relationship. Another one is actually in all, in all cases, I've known the CEOs for over ten years. This is the tension you'll have, which yep. is, um, hey, I want to coach you. Um, and in the back of their heads, they're always going to think, and you're our investor, and you are this. Yes. And I'm really open with you. Yeah. So that's going to be a tension. I don't know yes. how you may have uh, you've dealt with that, but there's always going to be a bit of that, like, 
man, love yeah. talking to you, but you do great. It's a, it's a different dynamic than, for example, in your case, right? Because, yeah, that, and that's totally right. Here's the key to coaching. I think when you're coaching CEOs is you're doing a one-on-one -on -one with them, which is yep. this is that one-on-one -on -one and you do parallel tracks, which is, hey, we're having a structured one-on-one -on -one and this is all your time. And in the same breath on a parallel track, I'm showing you best practices of how to do a one-on-one, -on -one, how to do these meetings and how to have relationships, working relationships with your team and your reports. And you hold them accountable. You set goals with them. You have a structure for issues. You give them feedback. You have topics. In the beginning, at the top of it, you go, how are you? Tell me something good. You've got to actually prompt them. And you got to say, hey, tell me something good that happened in the last three days. Uh, I, uh, oh, our sales went up. No, tell me something good that happened in your life. Because what you're trying to say to them is, you work, but I'm also interested in your life. And you take yeah. a moment and you, they'll go, oh, I went for a walk with my wife along the da, 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 da. And we did this. Oh, I love that area. Have you ever tried to walk over here? Next yeah. time you talk to them, hey, did you go out and walk? Because you're interested in them as people. Because if they feel connected to you as a person, they will open up and they will have trust with you. But you've got to foster that. Um, but remembering that that one-on-one -on -one is all about them. And this is when you meet with them. And I would do it on a regular cadence. Sure. It's, it's the one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And then you move on to, hey, here were the actions that we went over last time. This isn't about I'm grading you. I'm not sitting yeah. here going, why didn't you get that done? It's more like I am 100% invested in helping you unblock anything that's in front of you. Yeah. And then... You know, they'll open up and they'll, it's that sense of trust. And sometimes you're going to have to say when they say, well, there's not nothing really wrong or that, 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 you go, Hey, I bet this is happening. And you ratchet it up 20%. Yeah. Maybe you throw in some profanity and you're like, yeah, I bet you're thinking, what the fuck is Matt talking about? That, that, that. Yeah. Well, I wasn't actually thinking that, but it, there's a version of that. Great. They can see that you've heard them. And then you go on to the next thing, which is their goals. And I like to do three goals per quarter, a company goal, a goal within the company for them and a personal goal and personal goal might be like, Oh, you know, I want to get to work two hours earlier. No personal goal is, did you go out for that walk? Did and you, and you got to search because sometimes they'll be like, um, yeah, personal goal is I want to go to the gym more. No, did you go do something cultural? Did you love movies growing up? Did you go see five movies? You know, yeah. AMC has a $20, da, 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 da. oh, monthly thing. And then every time you speak to them, you go back to the goals and say, how are you doing with those? Uh, it's been tough. My father is sick back in India and I've had to go back twice. Oh my gosh, what can I do to help? Yep. Then you go on to those issue proposal solutions. Hey, I've got a couple issues. And what you try to stay away from is this kind of mentality of, Matt, it's great we're talking. Um, here's seven things that have happened this week. Uh, I want a couple of pat on the backs and I want one, uh, can I get an okay from you? No, that's a different meeting. This is yep. all about them. Yep. And then you do those issue proposed solutions and then you go to topics and they might be like, hey, Matt, you've got 19 companies right now. You sold your first one when you were in your early thirties. How do you do off sites? Yep. I mean, you might be like, yeah, let's, well, awesome. Let's do blocking and tackling right now. And then you finish it up with just some feedback, which is like, I'm going to give you feedback and please give me feedback. And you model that feedback. You go, yep. we're going to do feedback. And, and at Mashari, we do feedback like you got to ask for it because people won't just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a bad bet. They're not going to give you, Matt, the investor, feedback. But if right. you model it and then you go through the whole process of, you know, here's feedback. I'm going to repeat it back. Da, da, da. But everything you've done in that one-on-one -on -one in parallel is best practices. And they can take that on to their teams, which then they all use. And it's your way of going, I've just implanted this best practices of one-on-ones and conscientious uh, listening. And, yep. you know, other things like I sense you're in a state of fear. Yep. 
but also one of the things you mentioned about your very first coach was a little bit of that tough love. Yeah. And did that respond to you then? Do you think that would respond to you? Uh, you'd respond to that now? Uh, absolutely. You better. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, it's well it's open invitation. Alexis, go for it at any point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, here's the thing about coaching. Um, we don't know your company, but we, you think about your company 24 yeah. seven. I will never be able to come in and go, Oh, you know what you should be doing because that would be irresponsible with me. And I don't think about your company, but I think about coaching 24 seven. I think about the people I'm sitting across and how can I be most effective to help them find that answer. And so I think sometimes this tension you may have, which is I'm an investor and a coach, which is the itch to go, let me tell you the answer. Yeah. And that's a powerful itch. And how do you, and, I, and I'm interested, you know, with uh, this kind of dual row of, uh, role of coach and investor, how do you resist coming in and going, you should do it like this? A very helpful resistance is uh, feeling and having the experiences of that not being the, the best way and having you know done that a number of times before. And then I would say from a lot, number of my training programs, uh, and, I, and I like this about Moshari Method as well, uh, until, until they feel heard in terms of where they're coming from and the situation that they're in, uh, you know, advice is not going to, to land well. So um, that's a, um, I, I just think a key step that I will try to do um, before diving in with uh, opinions. Sometimes I will, I will ask, I will ask the question, would you like my, my feedback or thoughts on that specific issue? Uh, and actually wait for an affirmative. Um, I, I think that simple question of that simple action of ask, yeah. like I, I want to write a whole book and it's just going to stay on every page. Just ask the person. Yeah. Just ask. Yeah. It, it's, it's super, it's super powerful. In fact, when, when I, when I got to train with, uh, Dr. Don Got Gottman, who's going through all this sort of life's research on, you know, all this, uh, uh, relationship research and particularly like when he was dealing with partnerships where there was, um, just almost stonewalled gridlocked conflict. Um, same, same thing, uh, gr gridlock could not ever move until both sides had felt that they had been heard. Uh, uh, it's like a do not pass go and monopoly sort of thing, uh, thing. So, uh, I, I am now pretty good at remembering it, how to resist the itch. So that's, that's the other thing that has helped there is, uh, I just say some mindfulness training because the itch can be hard. I mean, I can't say I do it all the time, but it's just sort of like recognize the itch and, and be patient to remember the concept. Because otherwise your learning is not going to land. Well, your advice yeah, is not going to land. Yeah. And we know from our friends at conscious leadership that there's above the line and below the line. And one of the best, one of the, the, the most important lessons I've learned from that is, Hey, sometimes we dip below. Yeah. And we'll come back up. Right. Yep. Can you share with me a, an issue you've had with one of your CEOs and how you tried to help them through coaching and it didn't work? Yeah. I, I love your advice on, on, on this one. Um, I think it, I think what comes to mind worked partially, but I'm not sure we're, we're already there. So, um, can't, I can't say which one due to confidentiality, but there's one of the, one of the companies working away building and, um, had a strategic acquirer knock on the door and say, Hey, we're, we're interested in you guys. Uh, everybody felt it was the wrong time to pursue a conversation. So we said, uh, uh, thanks. We're flattered, but no, thanks. We're, we're continuing to build. They came back and said, Hey, uh, that sort of made them even more interested and said, Hey, and they, and they gave a preliminary offer actually, that was compelling enough for the management team to say, Hey, let's, let's actually entertain this conversation Be because it was sort of out of the blue. They, they needed to, to share a bunch of information to see or see if it was really a fit. It ended up being a big, uh, amount of work for the team. Uh, and they, them, the, the, the team was 
contemplating some pretty big life changes if this deal were to go through. And, and so, you know, all, all the sort of emotions around that. Um, after multiple weeks of really hard work, it uh, became clear that, that it, what the deal was not going to happen. So this big life change, these big things that were exciting, uh, um, this, big, this big opportunity, it's, it, it still could happen one day, but it's not going to happen now. And so it was, um, you know, a like I, I was left with working with them. Like they were freaking exhausted. Uh, they were also like dealing with going on an emotional roller coaster. And um, what I did do from my training was like, you know, just create space for them and for me, like going first of just like sharing, you know, my own. Uh, you know, emotions of feeling the dis- disappointment, loss, frustration from all that work that didn't, you know, turn anything. And um, I, I made the space for us all to um, sort of process that for, the, for them to then go and sort of, you know, sh- share that. Um, uh, and I think that was helpful, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd be curious how you might uh, – handle a situation like that because the team, um, you know, it's, it's sort of now resummoning, getting, getting back, being, you know, focused, staying on our, 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 our path after going through something like that. Let me just say, um, I think maybe in the future, we might have to put trigger warnings on this because as you were saying that I was thinking back to the day, I literally had an offer at the door (laughs) and my team was like, Oh, we need to take this now. Right. And then a board member saying to us, be careful because this is going to take a lot of time. Yep. And then, of course, we went running for the brass ring. And yep. it was eight feet past the edge of the cliff. And we all went, mm. yep. So uh, I, I definitely understand that. And I, I, I'm coaching some people with that right now. But th- let me um, let me just, just bring in one point about this, which is I, I want to say. So what you've had is you kind of had one of your companies it came knocking on the door. They said, hey, there's a nice little offer. Yep. You revise them. No, this is not the, the right time. Keep your head down. Product. Let's go. Yep. Um, the uh, potential acquirers came back and they, they, they pinned the, a note to the door and they said, we really want this for this. And the team went, oh, my God, let's chase after this. Uh, and then you had to manage them down when, unfortunately, the fairy tale ending had a bad ending. Um, and the question is, how does one handle a team after that when they're demotivated, when they're deflated? Totally. Yep. You got that right. And the way you went about it is to by saying, Hey, look, um, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to open up. I'm going to share with yep. you. This is not the first company to go through this. This yep. is not the first. And in fact, this is a, this is a really good sign. We're on to something. There's someone yep. out there who likes this. I went through three of those before I sold my first company, basically three situations like, uh, like this. So it, it is, and I learned a lot from it and we learned a lot from that. So that's actually, I believe, I actually believe that. Coaching sometimes is, is just that emotional moment where yeah. you're giving them space to express what was happening with the ultimate goal of saying, Hey, look, uh, at the end of the day, we need to get back to this. Look how we've done. Um, I'm available and I'll go first. But maybe it's like a, hey, we're going to do a one hour. Let's get everything out of us. Let's purge it out. What are your fears? And there might be fear there, which is like, oh, my God, will we ever have this again? Yep. And I think you answered that. There might be another fear, which is I told my spouse that we were going to, you know, the the Christmas vacation situation where we can get the pool. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Right. And so that's where that one-on-one coaching comes in and say, you say, Hey, let's dig a little bit deeper. Do I have this about right? And you may even have to go, Matt, you might have to say to them some wild, exaggerated, uh, scenario. And they were like, well, no, no, I I didn't buy a speedboat, but I did have it in my head that I could, um, you know, put my kids into private school. Yeah. Um, and it's having that conversation, which is, there is something there that's gnawing at them and being a partner. Yep. So essentially almost what, what, what I, I think I hear you saying is in stepping into a space with them as a partner, um, 
excavate the fucking hell out of all the difficult emotions that might be related to what we all just went through so that I assume the reason is, but correct me if I'm wrong, Alexis, so that um, there's an opportunity for those difficult emotions to, to almost leave the system uh, uh, and honor them appropriately. Right. So that, you know, maybe not, not in the next morning, but, but shortly thereafter, we can sort of move forward. Right. And it's, a, it's a space of yep. trust and vulnerability. Absolutely. And you go first and you say, uh, you gotta go first. Yeah. I, I would have loved if this had been sold. Yep. I, I, I sometimes count the, count the chickens before they're hatched. Yep. And I too was buying magic cards on eBay and oops. Right. Yep. I don't know if you're in the magic, but the point being is that there is going to be something in their heads that they went, mm, yep. I was going to get this. My, my, my dad sold his first company and I want to, or my brother, yeah. and it's going to go, I'm here to absorb it all. Yeah. I'll absorb that for you. But this is also, you know, and also show them that there's another narrative there, which is, Hey, we, we, we're onto something here. Yeah. An unsolicited offer. Pretty good. That's really helpful. Would you also, so one of the things I've studied a bunch of different conflict resolution, uh, uh, approaches and, and formulas. And one of the things I like about the Moshari method one, if I, my memory serves me, is um, when you've actually got two people who are uh, in, in conflict, uh, you, you all have a process where you actually start with the difficult emotions as prompts, uh, sort of fear, frustration, uh, uh, anger, what, you know, what have you, and as, you know, as well as sort of joy and, and excitement um, and have, have people in that case actually write out as prompts what are they feeling in terms of uh maybe frustration or sadness uh in, in a case like this uh when you know if and when you've got some people who you know maybe that excavation process is not the easiest thing for them would you consider kind of going to the like you know sort of giving people sort of those emotional you know the structure of something like that uh, to do that excavation work, if it's not coming naturally, that would be my, that was the sort of an idea I had as well. You're absolutely right. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're now, you've said the magic word, which is a prompt. Yeah. You know, and, and I think, you know, we, we in, we're blessed in this, in our tech space to work with very many different cultures. Right. Yeah. And so you, you do have that, but I think it's by not that moment that you're creating trust, it's that you've been developing and you're investing Absolutely. in trust for months, right? And you're saying is, hey, this is an opportunity. And I mean, I may have to give you the words. I may have to say this yeah. is that. And also, I give, you know, you, Matt, permission to be wrong and have that person say, no, it's not that. But if they go, but it's this, you've helped them. That's great. That's great. So it feels like a lot of the method and, you know, your particular like craft of coaching is um, having all of this sort of emotional intelligence, empathetic awareness, uh, uh, but r really leaning into thoughtful structure, whether it's in a one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's when, so just to can I say back to you what I, I think if I understand you're also your, your one-on-one -on -one structure, we kind of have been doing it a little bit here. So it's, it's start with good things. So, you know, a personal good thing and a work good thing. So somebody celebrating a win and sharing a win early. Right. Uh, because then I, you, th yeah. Let me just interject. I mean, yeah, it's, please. It, how often do you have a CEO goes, I need to talk to you. Yeah. What do you need to talk to me about? Hey, I want to tell you, I did a half marathon this weekend. Awesome. All right. right. Yeah, great. Take care. Yeah. No, yeah. it is. It, it's almost like a trigger. I see Matt. Yeah. I have the issue. Matt helps me solve the issue. I go away. Yeah. We're humans. Yeah. We want to just connect. Yeah. Right. So it always starts there and that's intentionally first. Right. Yeah. Then review actions. So, so you're, you're reviewing sort of like the, the, the promises that you, that, you know, were, were sort of commitments were made in pre, in previous meetings and, um, yeah. Let me say this about actions. Yeah. You're, you're dealing with people who are excellent at being accountable and doing yep. actions. They, they are, they're just, they're, yep. they're excellent at it, but there's going to be one which they didn't do. And that to you is going to be like, huh, 
let's together figure that one out. And that's yep. where you'll unpack some fear. You'll unpack yep. something that they'll go, yeah, I didn't do that because I was afraid that you would be mad at me. Ooh, let's get into that. Or I was afraid the company would implode. Oh, let's get into that. And then that's where you can really unpack some stuff. But it's also to say is, hey, maybe when you came to me with an issue, you weren't able to think clearly to come up with an action plan. And I just helped you. Yep. So, and, and then that's you move so, on. Got it. Yeah. And then you move on to, to after discussing those actions, then, then sort of the, the issues that the challenges well, they're facing. I do goals because okay. it's like, I just goals want to know. for the actions. Yep. Right. And it doesn't have to be, you know, you can, you can uh, adjust as needed, but, and you maybe don't have to do goals every one-on-one, -on -one, but maybe yep. it's monthly and you're saying, Hey, how, how, how are you doing against this? Because one thing I've noticed is CEOs are very, you know, they'll think of goals, but oftentimes their goals are actions. They're not goals. Yep. So they'll be like raise revenue. I'm like, that's not a goal. Yeah. That's, a, that's a broad thing. What, it, you know, what is the metric? You know, and what is the thing? You know, it's like um, plan awesome birthday party for mom. Mom's birthday party is the goal. Plan it. Do, do, do all these are the actions below it. So yep. if a goal starts with a verb, it's not a goal. It's an action. Makes sense. Uh, and then issues, the, the issues section is sort of diving into like discussing kind of like we just did, right. With it, with, with an issue that I was, I was, I was facing with, uh, uh, you know, my team and motivating them after this sort of, you know, uh, disappointment. We have, a was, form, we have a framework yeah. for that, which is okay. Issue. Who's the decider on this issue? Who's the yep. decision? -maker? Who's also the, who, who's presenting it. So you, you have an issue and you're writing it out. And you're just saying, these are the facts. This is what happened. But the yep. last sentence of the issue has got to be, what decision do you need made? Right? Yeah. Otherwise, it's, it's just a, a venting session. And the next part, which is interesting, I think, for RCOs, which is to say, how did you create this situation? Yeah. And what it does is it stops people from going, you know, my CTO is a complete idiot. No, your CTO is not. Your CTO was hired by you. Yep. Your CTO was given direct the and then you go into the proposed solution and yeah. the proposed solution can't just be a question mark, a smiley face. Like we're going to figure yeah. it out. No, take a stab at it, write it out. Yeah. And then what we recommend doing is doing a loom video describing all of this so we can get context. Not, you're not reading a script, yeah. you're describing it. So I can see your emotions and then you and your colleague, your CEO, whoever it is, is going to sit down and do five minutes of written brainstorming. Yep. Do you have enough information to make a decision? Whoever's the decision maker. Yeah. So your coaches, the CEO you're coaching is, is, is submitting to you a loom video of the issue uh, in, in advance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what, what am I going to say to somebody like, Hey, Hey, we're going to stop yeah. doing these. I'm going to fire you. No, right. I, I, you kind of have to go. But at the very least I do ask them to describe it to me. Yeah. And, and, and the reason you're doing a Loom video is so you can watch it 2x speed before the meeting and you can jump. jump yeah, out. exactly. All right. Yeah, um, and, it, and it creates the discipline. It's a great model and it creates the discipline for them to act that of their teams throughout the organization, which is, exactly. which is a huge time saver. What I also love, just want to comment, I, lo I love uh, that, that your process also asks kind of a question how they contribute uh, yeah. to the issue, or I would ask me that. It's such a good reflection question. There's one of, you, you may know of, uh, the coach Jerry Colonna, I, I really like yeah, his yeah. work too. He's one of my fa favorite question, coaching questions is like, how are you complicit in creating the conditions you say you don't want? Uh, yeah, your, your, a your, your, your version is a version of that, which, which I, I just I'm going to be much cruder question. than that. And, and, yeah. uh, and Trisha and the team are probably gonna be like, please no more profanity, but it's like, Hey, you, how'd you cause this? <laughs> yeah. How'd you cause it? Your, sh your shit stinks too. So yeah, what the fuck happened? Sorry. Yeah. But it's true. And I love the pause. CEOs kind of go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me do this. Let me figure yep. this out. And it, it ties into this whole thing of like, hey, you are ultimately responsible for your company. Yep. You can't pass the buck. Yeah. Show me stay. Uh, sure, man. That's right. And then you go into uh, topics and then you finish with feedback. Uh, so here, here's one of my, my, my questions with your structure. So... Uh, 
would it be in feed, the feedback section? Let, let's just say, okay, I'm coaching the, my, you know, my, my CEOs and I'm helping them go through your, uh, your, your great structure and the issues that they're bringing up, the actions that I'm helping them sort of uh, uh, work through. Um, I've got a different point of view with regard to um, whether or not those should frankly be the priorities or not. Uh, um, yeah, Matt, this is going to be your, this is going to be your yeah, struggle. Yeah. Is, 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 uh, is, is your advice. I wait till the feedback section to uh, uh, share that, or I get into it sort of while we're, you know, while we're talking through the action towards goal section is like, I, I hear you. However, yeah. I got to ask you, Matt, are you a coach or are you the investor? Because that sounds like to me the investment. Yeah, I wear I wear both. I, I I I need to wear both hats at a certain time. I need to wear one. You know, I have responsibilities uh, in in both domains, which if is we which were is to, part of what's my challenge. If we were to take a poll of the nineteen companies and who you know, let's say the nineteen CEOs, yeah. and I, we said investor, coach, tick the box. What would I they think say? they would have they would they would say investor before coach. Right. They would see it. I mean, they, uh, yes. I think you're, you're, you're yeah, setting a line that. here, right? And, I, and this is me mm -hmm. coaching you, which is yes. you want to be a coach, right? Yeah. You want to be a coach because it feels right. It's like, hey, I'm nurturing yeah. and I'm bringing them and yeah. I've had great coaching too. And I'm just saying to you is, um, is it realistic that you can be a coach like, um, Bill Campbell um, and Jerry Clone and Matt, yeah. right? Or are you some sort of look? I am what I am. I'm the I'm 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 the investor. So it is a fine line, you know. Or, or, or Shell Amberg, where it's like, hey, I, I give feedback, but I also they know they need to get it done, but they feel nurtured. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, if I were to. Own it, I would probably say I'm an investor who's trying to use the principles of great coaching, but you're right. Uh, I, I need to not be confused. Yeah, because sometimes we go, hey, I want to be, I'm, I'm this, this is the narrative I'm saying, I'm a coach. And your audience looks at you and goes, you're my investor. Like, yeah. I, I, there are wrong answers here. Yeah. I bet they think at times, yeah, you know what? I, I could fuck this up. I could, yeah. I could say, he could be like, Hey, I'm trying to coach you. God, this guy's an idiot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good uh, thing for me to reflect on because it's more of like, th there's, there's plenty of people and other founders in my network. If I want to have a more pure coaching dynamic, I could do that. Uh, uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a different activity. Uh, so sometimes, you know, going back to you're the investor, there is a role there for you to play because of all the things you bring to the table, which is yeah. three things I'm going to bring to you. One, you've had a tremendous amount of investment in yourself, coaching, best coaches, yeah. right? You can bring that. Two, you're a founder who successfully exited a company. You can literally say, I know what it feels like to be in the foxhole. I, yeah. I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like at two in the morning when the, the term sheet doesn't come in and you go, Oh my God, honey, we're going to have to move into my parents. All right. And three, you have a unique background, German Catholic, um, you know, candy store to great yeah. 1939 to that, that stock boy. I know what it feels like to work my ass off. Yeah. I went to Amherst, whatever. I also worked hard and it's all of these putting together, which is I'm asking Matt, who is Matt taking all this, not all these other pieces. But I feel like if I was one of your 19 CEOs, I'd be like, man, what an asset on our team. Yeah. But finding and being truthful to yourself about your audience and what are you, how will you establish that this is how I'm going to help you? What's the agreement you can give your CEOs? Yep. That's good. That, that's good homework for me Yeah. Uh, to get to get more clear on. Um, and that's coaching. There you go. Love it.
could, if we have a couple more minutes, could I ask you a, couple, a little bit more about the craft of coaching and, and, and specifically in your method? Like, it sounds like, you know, you've been a founder before you came to the Moshari method. Uh, I'm sure you've done, you know, coaching. Like, how did, how did you sort of level up and become somebody who's got all this potential to be a great coach. Now you're the head coach of Moshari Method. Like, like how did you actually lear- level up your skills? And I, and I guess as an analogy, what I'm, what I'm really interested in, you know, a good um, sports movie, how like two thirds of the way through a sports movie, there's almost always like the training montage where like, you know, the person with amazing potential, it's Rocky four. In my case, as a child of the eighties, he goes to Russia. He's like trained in the snowy mountains. He's like lifting rocks, you know, to like sort of access his potential. Now he's ready to like, like yeah. I'm interested in, in your method. Like what, what did the training montage look like for you to actually develop these, uh, uh, skills, uh, uh, if, if you wouldn't mind sharing. No, not at all. And thank you for asking. So my skills come from, I think I have, I've always been interested in entrepreneurs. I've always been interested in kind of who leads the company and how the hell did they get from point A to point B. Yep. Um, I think I always had an ability to ask questions that lead us somewhere. Um, coupled with being a founder and frankly failing, I failed. I did not do well. I wish I had a, a, I had a coach for a little bit. I wish I had more. But the, but through that, I went, but I always like connecting with people. I always like hearing their story. And then when I met Matt, you know, he said to me, Hey, you, you should be a coach. You, you have this background. And I, uh, started training with him. And, um, the first time I got in front of a CEO, I remember who it was, I, uh, I think the guy wanted to get off the phone within three minutes and he um, humored me and stayed on for 20 minutes. Yep. And I think I, I, I took many, many of those failures, like literally so nervous that I had one of my colleagues who's also a coach in another window typing to me saying, say this, say that. So yep. just petrified. But yep. I'm like, oh my God, this, this guy is 30 and he's raised $10 million. Oh my God, what a... Right. Not to um, not to put that down, but now reps, 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 yeah. but also just curiosity of like, man, how do you run a company? And then yep. how do you connect and how do you, I help that person go and connect with that other person? And sometimes and my favorite is when we can make it as simple as possible and it's just a fine tuning and it's like, ah, oh, you mean? You get feedback like this. You say, when you do this, it makes me feel this. And you yeah. we can do this. I love breaking it down. So, so in other words, r- really understanding fundament- fundamentals of, of, of different micro skills or comments, like, like making people feel heard, like you were saying there, or, or, or like giving feedback. So, so some of it is uh, the, like the, the raw skills and competencies of the tools that you're going to need to deploy in a coaching session. Right. Exactly. The other one is, is just getting lots of reps. Getting lots of reps. So I would say it's three things. Hey, look, great. It, it's love of the craft of love literally of craft. sitting yes. across from somebody and saying, yeah. and, and I will tell you, talk about zone of genius. Yeah. Um, 15 minutes of talking to you. And I feel like I can run a marathon. Like I, yeah. I, I could go more energy. Yeah. No, I, every time I meet with a CEO, I'm energized. It's yeah. just, I love it. Yeah. Two, I have a framework. And I'm grateful to Matt for creating this framework. And, you know, I've taken, you know, 20% is me yep. and a lot is him. And it, I have a framework. I can answer questions. And then it's the other side of it is, hey, a bit of storytelling, a bit of connecting. And yep. it's, you know, it, it, it's investing in that person and wanting them to do well. But it's also a, a clear agreement. I am a coach. I don't invest yep. in your company. I don't do anything else. And at any time you can say, I'm done. And do you think that that, in your case, uh, that clean agreement where there's not an investment, like do, do you or Matt does not invest in, in the, the company that the coach in or uh, is, is critical or if it's, no. 
Okay. I, I, it's just the structure we have. Yeah, um, great. And I'm, I'm always tweaking it, evolving, it, it evolved, and we, we could do this. I, I've had clients come to me and say, hey, would you like a piece of my company you know, for coaching? Um, and it, at the moment, it's much cleaner and simpler to say, yeah, this is how I coach. I coach you and our relationship is monthly. If at yeah. the end of this month, you're not happy, if I'm not driving value, man, uh, let me help you find a coach that will really help you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I and, would encourage you yeah. as I'm thinking about this is coach a couple of entrepreneurs in a steady cadence with a plan yeah. that you have nothing to do with. Yeah. And they can turn to you and go, hmm, Matt, I'm not vibing. Hey, thanks a lot for yeah. your time in an email. Yeah. And you're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what I like about your, what I like about your format and structure is, um, there's feedback that's going to be part of it, which, which very much going to include that and asking for that. I, 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 uh, I like that suggestion. I mean, yeah. and, and, and I would say this, you know, a, a lot of what we do is feedback and it's, it's just to be able to look around the corner and go, Oh, something's yeah. coming down the, the pipe. Um, you, you know, Matt, I, ask for feedback at end of every one of his sessions. Yeah. And there's different feedback. How did I do as the meeting owner? How was the structure of the meeting? How am I yeah. doing in the company? How's the company doing? So it doesn't always have to be this feedback. And it's okay to say, I like this and I can't think of anything I didn't like. Yep. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So as we get closer to wrapping up, then I think some of my takeaways are Be mindful of the more mindful of the dynamic I have as both investor and coach, and really more investor uh, in the CEO relationships that I have. Right. I would even here's that magic word. I would Please. ask. I would ask and say, "Hey, here's. I understand that this is a unique dynamic. Yeah. I see myself as a coach. Um, you see me as the investor. Um." how can I be most helpful to this? And it may be like, I need you to be fucking to come down on me. I need you to be yep. that really tough love. Yeah. Um, yeah, I understand. But it is a, you know, I, I will say that structure really works, which is, Hey, yeah. here's this 25, 50 minute one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Uh, and then the, the other, uh, idea that, that you gave me, which, which, which I love, which I will, will try to do is let's try some purely clean, uncomplicated, no financial arrangement, uh, uh, coaching engagements with, with, uh, uh, other founders and feel what that's like get, and get feedback from, from them on, uh, what my coach is like in that more sort of clean yeah. dynamic. And let's, and let's continue. I, I'm happy to have a follow-up session with you to go, Hey, let, let's really look at what a 50 minute coaching session looks like. So, it's buttoned down, it's time box, and you're like, okay, yeah. we'll move it along. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's great. Another thing I was going to say to you, and I'll remember it tonight when I'm sleeping. Um, Matt, thank you so much for being the first guest. My pleasure. Our, yeah, you you are you've set a very high bar, and uh, I will always be grateful that uh, you were easy on me, and uh, I hope we we gave you we we provided some value. Absolutely. And, you know, one of my uh, happiest uh, moments is when I help like co-create ideas and start to see them happen. So yeah. in, the, in the background, I connected with, with you might know this with Nancy from your organization a little while yeah. ago talking about social strategies. I was like, you guys should do a podcast so people can see your coaching li uh, live in action. And I was like, I'll be a guinea pig. And she's like, I think I might take you up on that. So it's, it's fun when, when an, an idea organically arises and it, and it happens that that brings me a lot of joy. So, um, well, I look, wish you great success with the podcast. Let's take another minute. Let's do the feedback thing. How was this? Please. What can I do on a scale of one to five with three being meets expectations? Uh, five being, wow, you should have a, a nightly talk show. Um, and what did you like about it? And what can I do to, uh, level up? I'm going to say, Three and a half. 
because I believe vastly in your potential, Alexis. And uh, what I think could help take it more towards five mm -hmm. is at least early in these early episodes, um, a little bit more pre-work and excavation perhaps of uh, the, t the topics that we, we could explore. Maybe your team could do this, might not need to be, to be you. I, I filled out the, uh, the form in sort of company OS, but um, for this to be um, amazing, I think early on two dynamics, A, being, ha having the ability to, to choose which topic somebody might be wrestling with could, could make for honestly like good live coaching that would make for engaging podcast content and for you to be able to, to potentially help people choose that um, might, might uh, uh, like I could imagine I, with a little more time, I could have laid out six ideas and you, you and I, or you and your team would be like, let's, th those two would be, make for a really good podcast version. Let's, let's hone in on those two. Uh, uh, and I think, you know, that's probably what great talk shows are doing, right? Where they're, uh -huh. they're working with their, you know, in, in, yeah. in advance. I think secondly, I would be mindful of the fact that this is a record, more mindful that this is a recorded, uh, uh, coaching session. And I think perhaps more than, than I would, but it did come up for me. I, I did, I, I did have to be a little self-aware of like, well, what, what issues can I actually cover that? And for example, I'm, I, I know that what, what Tim Ferriss does is upfront with his guests. He's very clear, Hey, if we cover anything that um, ends up feeling uncomfortable that you wouldn't want to share publicly, um, uh, you know, you'll have full sort of ability to, to edit that, that out. Yeah. And so what that does is it creates a little extra trust in the recorded, the rec recorded person. And he that. then can say, yeah, go, I want you to go as vulnerable as you can. And I promise if we cover anything that doesn't feel comfortable afterwards, you can pull it out. And I, I, I think if you were to do a, a little bit of that communication and create that container, it would serve you uh, well as you're getting into this recorded coaching space. Right. Uh, um, and uh, those are, those are two pieces I of feedback I'd share. Thank you. Uh, what I hear from you is, Hey, um, a, you know, um, maybe a little more pre-work, just uh, be, be there like the, the good talk show host. Yeah. You've got some pre-work and maybe, uh, or another B would be, uh, set it up in the beginning, which is, hey, this is this is a, a safe space because we are going to be able to edit anything that would be uncomfortable, which lays a good ground, uh, good groundwork or uh, foundation of trust. Um, exactly. And by the way, anything we covered here, if you want to have. Oh, it. and no, and I'm I'm 100 percent comfortable with that with everything, but but that was uh, just 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 well, a just, thought. Anyway, we use AI deep fakes, so it's <laughs> a lot of what I want you to say. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I, my offer stands. If you want to talk about the how to uh, uh, do those 25, 50 minute, but uh, I would love it. So thank you, Alexis. Thank you so much. If you're interested in working with a Mashari Method coach, please DM at ADA ME. C-O-U-R-T on Twitter, or check out MasharimMethod.com, or email us at coach at MasharimMethod.com.